Well, hello there, motherfuckers. And once again, it is time for Brad's Top 10 Most Hated Wrestlers. And as this is the point where you can start to cry, get your fucking tissues ready, you know, <laughs> Brad's hating on my wrestlers, and all right, so here we go, motherfuckers, with the top 10 most hated wrestlers. And number 10, it's TJ Perkins. I really realized it when I was watching Raw, just TJ Perkins looking like a fucking beta male cuck. You know, the thing is, what happened to all the tough-looking guys in, in wrestlers? Why does this guy look, look like some type of nerdy... You know, metrosexual. What what happened to all the guys that looked like they could kick people's asses? Remember when McMahon uh, said that he didn't like John Morrison? He made him grow a beard because he didn't, you know, he didn't think that Morrison looked like some somebody that could kick someone else's ass. Remember those days? Maybe we should get back to those days. I, you know, what, what? Like, uh, this is what passes as a wrestler nowadays with T.J. Perkins. I mean, it's like everybody looks like this nowadays. Now, I mean, at least the guy looks like he works out, unlike Sami Zayn and Finn Balor. But, you know, we'll, uh, I don't want to spoil anything, but, you know. And also, I like 8-bit music, you know. I like video games and shit. You can check out my retro gaming, you know, reviews and stuff on this channel. But the song is just nerdy. It doesn't fit with wrestling, you know. They think that maybe the people are going to get behind him because of his cool 8-bit theme music. But, no, he just fucking sucks. A fucking metrosexual-looking nerdy doofus. <laughs> That's exactly what he looks like. And I'll tell you this much. Uh, I'm happy that Neville cut the promo on him on Raw and said, you know, the guy is just overlooked, and I hope he keeps getting overlooked. At number nine, Gallows and Anderson. You know, like, these guys came in, everybody was, when's the Bullet Club going to debut? When's the Bullet Club going to debut? When's the Bullet Club going to debut? And then they debut and it fucking sucks. It's just two bald idiots. They, uh, oh, they work for New Japan. And? And they work for New Japan. And? And they work for New Japan. Who gives a fuck? I think every fucking wrestler's worked for New Japan. Fucking Albert worked for New Japan. Even my fucking grandmother has worked for New Japan. My neighbor down the block has worked for New Japan. Working for New Japan doesn't mean fucking shit. It's like, it's almost as much of an accomplishment as eating a fucking hand sandwich. It's a fucking ham sandwich. No one cares. It's fucking New Japan. No one gives a fuck. No one gives a fuck about New Japan. If I lived in Japan, maybe I'd care about New Japan. And how how new is it? It's been around for a long fucking... I'm just kidding, but you know... You, know, you, go, oh, you don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, I don't know what I'm talking about. You go watch your fucking New Japan and leave me the fuck alone about your stupid fucking New Japan wrestlers. Let them stay in New Japan and, uh, you know, we'll be all honky-dory and shit. New Japan. Fuck New Japan. This is all these, the fucking YWC wants to talk about. You know, if you got a chance to, to go to a New Japan show and, uh, you know, you were there, you'd probably try the same thing. You'd probably make a fool out of yourself. CM Punk! CM Punk! Yeah, you, you know, you guys are real mature, uh, eclectic wrestling fans. That, this is what it's like. It's kind of like, you know, somebody that drinks a dry-ass wine pretending like they're classy and shit. Oh, this wine tastes great. It tastes really oaky. But the thing is, they're just doing it to look like they're high class and shit. But they're not high class. They're just an a idiot, um, you know, trying to drink a fucking um, shitty ass wine when the fact is that the best tasting wines are red sweet wines. You know, it's like you're not fucking impressing anybody by saying that you watch New Japan. To because it's like not as mainstream. It's uh, trust me, it's pretty mainstream along with the other YWC morons. And number eight, Sasha Banks. I remember when I used to, you know, praise Sasha Banks, and she's a good wrestler and everything. Uh, 
but the thing is, she's so overrated. The YWC and the entire internet overrates her so much. And then I realized that the boss character doesn't even make any fucking sense. It re really, like, she's just, I don't know, she comes across as not cool. Another nerdy character. She has a weird face. She's really not that pretty. You know, you know, she's got the fucking wig or the weave or whatever the fuck it is. I don't fucking know. Her hair is a different color every week. She's like some type of, you know, ugly, uh, tranny Jeff Hardy. I, I don't fucking know what's going on there. But every single week, she's wrestling Charlotte. Thank God she's on uh, Raw and Charlotte's on SmackDown. At least they're fucking separated. And we don't have to live through that fucking torture anymore. So, the thing is here... What I'm really thinking about is why was she even allowed to beat Charlotte that many times? She's not even half as good as Charlotte. She's not in the same league as Charlotte. It's pretty obvious that, so you know, and, and, and here's the thing. Before they had Sasha, you know, don those stupid knuckle things, they're of a boss because I put shit on my hands. You know, she looks so fucking bland and boring. I remember when my friend Ryder or Wyatt over here, once again, like I said, you know, especially if you're into, you know, WWE figs, you know, collecting figures and shit, you should go check him out on this channel, Riot or Riot 1. My, you know, he showed me in a, a old WrestleMania program from a few years back. They had Sasha Banks in there before she put on the colorful shit. She looked like a plain ass fucking jobber, which shows that, well, you know, if it wasn't for the hair color and shit, she wouldn't stand out. Now I now I talk about people looking like stars and stuff, but she really is just a nobody. She's just like a pretender with a fucking wig on. That's all it is and some shit on her knuckles. Take that shit away and she's a fucking overrated nobody. At number seven, the Shining Stars. It's almost a fucking joke how many times they've repackaged Primo and Epico. You know, Primo and Epico themselves... Primo and Epico become fucking, uh, you know, rodeo clowns, fucking matadors. And I, I remember that matador shit with the mask? I mean, it, it, it almost looked like, like a fucking joke. Anybody ever seen Ed, Ed, and Eddie? Looking like the fucking mask mumbler. The mask mumbler from Ed, Ed, and Eddie with them stupid, dumb fucking masks on. Holy fucking shit. What a bunch of fucking nerds. And now they're like tour guides for... Who comes up with this shit? Hey, you know, we still got Primo and Epico on the roster. Should we fire them? No, actually, let's make them tour guides for Puerto Rico. Uh, yeah. What a bunch of morons. What the fuck is creative on anyway? F fucking terrible. And then they, they couldn't even commit to them for weeks. They were just doing promos backstage and were like, uh, you know, come the fuck. At number six, Ty Dillinger. This 10, 10, I can't wait for Ty to appear on Smack. I, I could have waited. What is it with Ty Dillinger that people like? First of all, he was a nobody. And then he started putting his hands up like this 10. And, and then all of a sudden, everybody wants a piece of his fucking ass. What, what, what is this nonsense that all of a sudden, because a guy does fucking ten, ten, you know, it's like Finn Balor, oh, you know, it's like, what, what is it with, with, with wrestlers, you, you know, I guess if a guy, you know, uh, uh, you know, simulated jacking off, people in the crowd would, oh, do that too. I mean, my God. What a bunch of fucking sheep. I know, you know, you could say what, like, you know, what, what wrestlers that, you know, everybody used to do that is cooking with the rock and shit like that, and that's the bottom line. But, you know, that's different than the 10, this, this nerd shit. Anybody could put their fucking hands up and say 10. If you took away the 10 thing, what else do you have? A boring jobber. And number five, Jack Gallagher. He has an umbrella. I remember first seeing this guy on the, the Royal Rumble with Jericho, where he gave the umbrella to Jericho and he was twirling it through his own legs. Blame it on Jericho, blame it on Gallagher, 
First of all, why is this guy's name not, not Gallagher? I said this before. Why is it Gallagher? What the fuck is he? What's the her part? Fuck that shit. His name's annoying. He looks annoying. He needs to go to the fucking gym. I, I, I mean, my God. Look at this. The, 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 where's the tan? Where's the build? No, nothing. How is he a wrestler? Even Rey Mysterio, as small as the guy was, who even do Guerrero? These guys worked out vigorously in the gym. This guy, he's just a fucking, you know, starving child or some shit, you know, from Ethiopia, except he's white, I don't fucking know, and, and, and they just throw him out there? What, what the fuck are we supposed to be a viable cruiserweight threat? He's out there, and he's kicking um, with fast lane. He's actually going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Neville. The guy, Neville's arms are, are, are fucking ten times bigger than this guy's arms. He's, I, I, I can't even believe that I'm actually supposed to believe that he could hang in a fight with Neville. Gallagher, take the fucking umbrella, shove it up his ass, and then open it. Well, that'd be interesting. It'd be more interesting than him. And number four, the guys that I copied the intro from this new day. First it's the trombone, then they don't have the trombone as much, then they're doing a fucking popsicle cart, their fan Final Fantasy characters, Dragon Ball Z characters, you know, it's so stale. Their whole character is that they're supposed to appeal to the nerdy fans. We're all goofy. We're unicorns. They walked around a whole year with unicorn horns in their head. They're riding on unicorns in their Titan Tron video. They, you know, like, how can men get behind this? This is just like what I said at the beginning with the TJ Perkins. It's like, this is not cool. This is not awesome. This is so lame. These outfits that they're wearing, they're annoying. How many times are they going to do the hoo 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 gimmick? And, and, and the thing is, the YWC and the IWC eat it up. They, you know, they're heckling Charlotte during her promos. They're giving a hard time to everybody else. And, they, you know, you're talking about how much you hate Roman Reigns, but yet you're praising this? Ha! Like, and number three, Bailey. I'm a hugger. What the hell is it? The, the side ponytail, it makes her look like a retard. And go back and watch my NXT videos. This is nothing new. I've always said this. She looks like she's supposed to be inspirational for retards, for mentally retarded, handicapped people. And I'm not saying this to be mean. I'm not saying this to be a bully. I'm not saying this to sound controversial. But she really does. She looks like she's retarded in the way she talks. My name's Bailey. I'm a champion. Am I supposed to buy Bailey as a champion? I will never buy Bailey as a champion. She is a fucking joke, is what it is. I, I, I mean, it's like she comes out with those things, whatever the fuck they're called. And, you know, it, it, it's like, again, the nerdy characters. How many fucking nerdy characters? What happened? to all the tough wrestlers. Uh, Charlotte, I'll tell you where they are. They're getting beat. Charlotte is jobbing out the people who are like Bailey. If this was in the 90s, this was during the Attitude Era, if this was even all the way up to 2007, 2008, Bailey would be at the bottom of the car. First of all, she wouldn't even be on the fucking roster at all. She wouldn't even probably even be in developmental for fuck's sakes. I mean, where, like I said, where are the standards? Doesn't anybody look at these people and be like, well, you know what, they're not really stars, they're just normal people. Like, why are we hiring them? And number two, Sami Zayn. Why did they even bother with this guy? At least when he was El Generico, at least he had a gimmick, at least he was entertaining. Now he's just a bland guy with no build, and nothing really to make him look interesting. He dresses like a taxi cab driver with the fucking, you know, uh, checkerboard on his pants, the taxi drive cab or hat. And, we're, you know, this is supposed to be one of the YWC's favorites. No personality, no, no charisma, no character. He's a good wrestler, but aside from that, 
He has nothing to make you want to watch him. Nothing to get behind him. He's not cool. He's not funny. He's, you know, he's got nothing to him. You've got a lot of guys who can wrestle. Nobody's taking it. Nobody on this list am I saying is a bad wrestler. I'm saying that a lot of them are overrated, but not really for their in-ring work. It's more just there's nothing special about them. I'm sorry, but wrestling is all about being special. Otherwise, Hulk Hogan and Stone Cold and The Rock wouldn't have gotten to the level that they were at. But just by being plain guys. Not everybody can be a plain guy. Oh, we don't want to insult any. It's so politically correct. We don't want to insult any. Anybody can be a star. <laughs> no. No. I'm sorry, but not everybody can be what they want to be. That's just the cold, hard reality here in life. At number one, Finn Balor. I said it time and time again. Stop being fucking lazy. You have a three-hour show every single goddamn week. I think you have more than enough time to put the paint on Finn Balor. But they don't want to put the paint on Finn Balor. So instead, who do we got? We got a skinny, plain-faced looking nobody in our main events. I mean, right now, you know, we had a mid-card match on Raw, but he'll, he'll be back in, uh, in contention for the Universal title before you know it. And we're supposed to sit here and pretend like Finn Balor is a main eventer. I use my, this example in my Raw review. Remember when you had The Rock, I think it was Judgment Day 1998, The Rock was in the ring with Elo Brown. And they were just finishing up the nation storyline of breaking up. The Rock was in the ring with D'Lo Brown. D'Lo Brown had all the talent in the world, but The Rock was obviously the bigger star. And you could definitely identify who was going to be the bigger star. You've got Finn Balor in the ring with Jinder Mahal. And Jinder Mahal is way down on the card, and Finn Balor is like held in very high regard. This time, it actually looks like the guy that's way down here should be held in higher regard. That's when you know you've got a fucking problem. Be and it makes no sense. They have a great thing going for him. He could be the demon. He could be the demon king. But, no. They don't want him to be the demon king. Instead, they want him to be the bland, boring, vanilla midget guy. How do you... I don't understand. The guy was holding a world title belt. The same world title belt that was held by guys that looked like The Rock. Guys that looked like Stone Cold. Guys that, that looked like Hulk fucking Hogan. Macho Man. Those are the guys, the ultimate warrior, that held the Batista, John Cena. They held this belt. And what do you like half those guys or not? It doesn't fucking matter. They all had one thing in common. They all looked a lot tougher and looked more like a star than fucking Finn Balor would ain't in a week. If he had the demon makeup on, that'd be a different story. But he barely wears it. So it doesn't matter. Since he's been back, he hasn't worn it once. So, to me, the guy just looks like a boring fucking jobber. He looks like Mike Enos from fucking WCW for fuck's sakes. I mean, he's, he's a boring looking fuck that's got nothing going for him. Basically, yeah, he wrestles, but so does everybody else. Like I said, give me one reason why a guy like um, Neville can't be at the top if a guy like Finn Balor can. I, I, I just don't understand. You, you're left with a guy that's just plain looking with no spectacular physique or any charisma to speak of. That's it. No promo skills, no nothing. So, why the fuck would I get excited to see Finn Balor? Nothing. Motherfuckers, these are definitely my top ten most hated wrestlers. Each one of them is more boring than the last. And each one of them is, I can't stand more than the last. And I know you're all going to complain, you're going to cry, and you're going to be like, well, I'm going to be at number one through ten. Me, 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 me. Well, fuck you. This is my list, motherfuckers. This is my yard.
since Roman Reigns is not going to claim the yard, I guess I'm going to have to do it. So, Roman Reigns might be, you, might, you know, WWE might be his yard, but the YWC motherfuckers, it's my yard. My yard. Until next time, motherfucker.